Welcome to my second video um, as I share what I'm learning about CCNA, my studies in CCNA. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you the basics of getting started with Packet Tracer, which I am using for my CCNA studies. If you've begun CCNA and gotten probably even a couple of days in, somebody's going to probably have already recommended that you download and begin working with Packet Tracer. If you're not familiar with it, Packet Tracer is a free network simulation tool from Cisco and it allows you to gain uh, lab experience even if you don't have physical equipment. So it's really an amazing tool to work with. I'm just getting started, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. So I, what I wanted to do for this video is just give you the absolute basics of the interface. so You can get up and running and begin experimenting uh, with the software. And so also you are able to follow along any tutorials, for example, you might be watching on YouTube or CBT Nuggets, et cetera, et cetera. So I already have Packet Tracer installed, obviously. So your first step is going to be to go to Google, search for Packet Tracer. You'll want to look for the netacad.com link, netacad.com. Um, netacad.com is Cisco's uh, networking academy site. So click that link, and we'll be brought to the Cisco Packet Tracer page. Now, in order to access the download link for Packet Tracer, you are required to enroll in a free course provided by Cisco. You don't actually have to take the course though. You simply have to enroll so you can get to the software download link. So what you'll want to do on this page, for example, is look for the Introduction to Packet Tracer course. Uh, click it. It'll bring you to another page. Look for the sign up form. Click sign up. Uh, in my case, it would be English. Choose your language. In my case, it would be English. Just follow the steps to enroll. And uh, once you've finished enrolling and you're logged into the Network Academy site, it should look something like this. And near the top, you'll see a pull down, a drop down menu for resources. Use that, then go down to download Packet Tracer. That should launch the page where you can choose your operating system, currently Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. There I have seen a mobile version of Packet Tracer, but it looks like they're going to end that soon. Well, actually, it looks like they'll end that in July of 2021. They won't be supporting it. So you could probably still get that. Once you've got uh, gone through the process of downloading and installing, uh, you'll want to launch Packet Tracer. And the first time, keep in mind, every time you use Packet Tracer, you actually have to be signed into your Networking Academy account through Packet Tracer. So what I recommend is the first time you launch Packet Tracer, down in the lower left-hand corner, you'll see a, a checkbox. It's something like keep me logged in. So check that, and then the next time you open Packet Tracer from there on out, you don't have to worry about logging in. It'll just pop up for you. So we'll get things started. I'm currently using version 7.31 of Packet Tracer. When you open the program, by default, you should be in what's called the logical view. And this is your workspace. And down here, you're going to see categories like network devices, end devices, components, connections, miscellaneous. And then under those, so for example, under the network devices, you'll have subcategories. So you'll have routers, switches, hubs, wireless devices, security, and WAN emulation. And then as you look, so for example, as we choose network devices, we choose routers, you'll see over here the, the variety of routers that are available to, for us to play with. Same with switches, the various switches that are available. So if when you start off, if you're not in the logical view, say you pop up and this shows, this is called the physical view, we want to start in the logical. Click the logical view button. To get rolling, let's start adding some equipment to our workspace. So I'll choose network devices. I'm going to choose routers. In this case, I'm going to choose the 2911, which is here. And you'll see it's reflected down here when you scroll over a particular device. The device number will be shown for you. So to uh, move a device into your workspace, you just drag and drop. That simple. There it is. So we have router zero. And it's a 2911 Cisco router. The next thing, oh, there's a quick thing to point out. When you hover over the device, I can get it to stay up there. 
it'll show you information about the ports, IP address, the MAC address, etc. So right now everything's down on this. This isn't active. It's just got it on the page. We got it in our workspace. So let's next go with a, we'll go back to network devices. Let's choose a switch. For the switch, we'll just use this one, a 2960. We'll drag and drop up to our workspace. All right, then let's go back to um, the category of end devices. And let's add uh, a PC, a laptop, and a server. So we'll drag a PC up, drag a laptop up, and we will drag the server up. Now that we have our devices in our workspace, the next step is to connect them. So you'll look down here in the categories. This is the this lightning bolt is the connections um, icon. Click that, and then you'll see the various options that are available to you. So copper straight through, copper crossover, fiber, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, all the various options that are available to you to use. If you're just getting started like I am, what I recommend is choose this lightning bolt link here um, because it uh, automatically chooses the correct connection type for you. So if you don't know, for example, what kind of connect should you use, a, a, a straight through or crossover with a PC to a switch, a switch to a router, et cetera, et cetera, just let, for now, just choose automatically choose connection type. So we're going to start with that. And all you have to do is after you click on it, you come up to your first device, you click it, and then you run up to, in this case, from the PC to the switch, and it's in place. And we're gonna do that again, from the laptop to the switch, and again, from the server to the switch, and finally, we're gonna go from the switch router. So at the top of the screen, you can see it's kind of Cluttered here, we're going to move things around a little bit. So, to move devices, you just make sure you have your select device chosen, and we'll move this over a little bit, and you can see a little bit better now. This is the router number. The, the router is the 2911, it's router zero. The interface is gig zero zero here. So, for the switch, we'll move the piece a little bit so you can switch in from a little better. That one that way, blocking it. We have the router, we have the switch, we have the PC, we have the laptop, and we have the server. The first thing that I want to do is click on uh, the PC to show you how you can get more information about the devices. So if you click on the PC, you'll be brought up, uh, a window will pop up, and it'll have tabs across the top, physical, config, desktop programming attributes. I'll let you explore those. There's a lot of information in there. The physical view is a literal physical view of the device. You can zoom in and zoom out. You can look at the different uh, connections that are available. Config, uh, we'll come back to that in a second. Um, programming attributes, but desktop is really interesting because under desktop view of the PC, you can do things like bring up a command prompt, and then you can ping other devices in your network, and we'll do that in a minute. So um, another interesting point is, for example, the web browser. You can pull up a web browser on your PC or your laptop, and if we were to set up a web server on our server, we could uh, use this particular browser and take a look at the information on there. So again, that's available for all the devices. You simply click the device. It'll bring up this window for the switch. It's a little bit different. You've got physical, um, which is nice. It shows you what that particular switch looks like. You've got config, we'll look at in a little bit. Your command line here. One thing I do want to show you quickly, uh, I'm going to pull up, I'm going to just throw another switch up on the screen. So we'll go with network devices, we'll go with switches. I want you to see this. So throw 2960, I'm going to click on that, and then go to the command line. And you'll notice that it's initializing, it's actually loading. So this is pretty cool because it's simulating what you would see with the physical router. Um, you see the same thing. So it pops up, now it's up, and it gives you all the information. So let's go ahead and close that one. We're going to delete. So to delete an item, you can either click it and hit your delete button, or there is a delete button here. Delete this selected item, yes. Um, if, for example, you were to delete your server and you didn't mean to, you can just go back to edit. Back. So right now we see that we have our devices on the screen. We have our connections between the devices. 
these look active, but these aren't active. So the reason why these aren't active right now between the, the, the connection between the switch and the router isn't active is um, for security reasons, the, the router is going to need configuration uh, before it'll start allowing information to flow through it. So before it allows any data to work. So we will have to go back into that and work with that a little bit. So let's start with the select button. We're going to select the router and we're going to go to command line interface here. And what we want to do is we want to open this interface, the gig zero zero interface. So in your command line interface, I'm going to ask you, would you like to enter the initial configuration dialog? Just choose no. Okay. And then press return to get started. Okay. So we're going to walk through just the basic, just there's like four commands that will bring this um, interface up on this router. So the first command is enable, and it's just that. You can also use shortcuts uh, with the commands. Uh, or abbreviations, however you want to put it. You can use tab, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. For this video, I'll just type things out just so you see what the word word is that I'm using. So we want to choose uh, enable to start with, and I believe that brings us into what's called privileged deck mode. The next step that we want to get into is we want to get into the configure mode. So we have to type in the command configure terminal. So configure terminal, hit enter. Uh, we see that the, the, the prompt changes now where it says it went started off with here as the, the greater than sign and that little hashtag there. Now we're into the oops, configure mode with the hashtag. Um, we need to specify that we're going to work with this particular interface. So we want to type in uh, interface gig. Zero, zero. You'll see there won't be any uh, response other than a change again here where it shows a router config IF. So we're, at, we're in the interface configuration mode. And then to bring that uh, live, it's a really simple command. It's just no shutdown. And you'll see now the response is interface uh, gigabit ethernet zero, zero change state to up. And when we look over at our workspace, you see the triangle that was previously red is now green. And we're still, it looks like we're still waiting for the switch to recognize that the, the router is active. So we'll give that a second. So while we wait for that to work its way through, let's go ahead and start assigning some IP addresses um, so our devices can communicate. And we'll start with the router. And you can either go into the config mode and choose, for example, the interface that you want to work with up a little bit. And you can put in the, the address information. Um, I want to just for the router, let's use the command line. So, oh, one, one thing I forgot to show you with the router before when we, we brought that interface up, we did see that it was up because now we see we have two green triangles on the router. Uh, the way you can verify what we did was, um, Go back to, uh, and we'll go to uh, show IP interface three. Okay, so here you see the status is up of gigabit, uh, gigabit, gigabit Ethernet zero zero status is up. We're good to go there. So the next thing we want to do is let's go ahead and get back into this dropped out when I hit the end command. Go back into the interface, the um, configure uh, configure mode. So let's go back to um, where at interface. You can just type it out, but interface gig zero dash zero. Enter. Oh, I made a mistake. So we'll try. Uh, I need to go to config terminal first. And then we'll type in interface, big, and that's the one we want to work with. So we're, router, we're in the router config interface mode. Interface. Okay. 
So let's assign an IP address. We'll just use 10.10.10.1 or uh, the router. So the, the command is simply IP address and then the IP address that you're going to use. We're going to use 10.10.10.1 and then assub the, assign the subnet mask. So we'll do 5.5.5.0. You don't understand that yet, don't worry about it. Just type the numbers in. You'll, you'll pick that up soon enough. Um, that's done. We're going to go type in end again. And we're going to see if the, the uh, IP address that we assigned here of 10.10.10.1 um, actually got put into place. So again, show IP interface three. There we go. And now we show the results, gigabit ethernet 00 as an IP address of 10.10.10.1, and the status is up. So we're good to go on that. We're going to close down the router for now, and let's move to the PC. Um, for the PC, um, this time let's go into configure, um, use the config tab, and we're going to go into settings. And we need to set our default gateway, which is going to be the router. Um, and we remember the router's address is 10.10.10.1. So we'll use that to configure the PC. Or under settings, default gateway, 10.10.10.1. And then we want to go to um, make sure that the PC has an IP address. So we go to Fast Ethernet 0. We're going to choose our IP configuration. We're going to choose static. We're going to type in its address, and we'll just use 10.10.10.2. And then a subnet mask we'll do of 255.255.255.0. Okay. That's pretty much all you need for that. Um, what we can do now is we can go to desktop, open up a command prompt. So we remember that the router is 10.10.10.1. PC is 10.10.10.2. So let's just ping it and see if I set it up correctly. So ping 10.10.10.1, and if it works, okay, we got things set up right. We're getting a response. We're getting a reply. So we'll close that. Let's move to the laptop. We're going to go to config, do the same thing. We're going to go into the settings. We're going to choose default gateway of 10.10.10.1, which is the router. We're going to go into the fast Ethernet interface. We're going to use chat, choose static IP. IPv4 address, and we're going to do 10.10.10.3. Router's 1, PC 2, laptop is 3. Subnet mask 255.255.255.0. And let's go ahead and go over to the desktop mode, open up the command prompt in the laptop, and let's try pinging the router and see what we get. So we're going to choose ping 10.10.10.1, see what we get. So we're good there. So finally, let's move over to the server in a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and pop open its configuration. And for it, we're going to also choose settings, default gateway, which is the router, 10.10.10.1. And then go to fast ethernet, which is interface here. And But we want to assign a IPv4 address to the um, router. And we're going to make that one 10.10.10. And then three, so it's about four. Okay. Then a subnet mask of 255, 255.0. And we'll go to the desktop and prompt. We'll try pinging the router like before. To the other devices. So ping 10.10.10.1. We're getting a response. So we're getting a response from the router. Let's try pinging the PC. 10.10.10.2. See what we get? Yep, good response. Getting a reply. And let's try the laptop. So let's ping that. Ping 10.10.10.3. And we're getting a reply. So we're, we're doing well with the setup so far. Um, this over a little bit. Now, before uh, leaving the server, one thing I do want to show you that's pretty cool about this is with the server. Um, it's window, it has these tabs at the top, physical, config, services, desktop. So look at the services. So we have a server here, 
And over on the left hand side, it shows you all the different services we could set up. So we could set up an HTTP server, either regular or secure. You could set up a DNS server. You could set up email, FTP, et cetera, et cetera. So for example, we could set up an HTTP server on this server and then go back to this PC and open up the web browser, which is here, and type in the URL or the IP address and we would get the response from that. So that's actually really neat that that's built in. And again, there's options for everything from HTTP to FTP to email, um, DNS, DHCP, all kinds of good information. So let's move on to um, looking at some traffic move across the network. So we've been pinging the different devices. So for example, we've pinged the router from each of the devices. But we haven't actually seen anything occurring, and that's because we've been in what's called real-time mode. So let's move over to simulation mode. And when you do that, uh, a simulation panel will appear. And what we want to do is let's go down here to uh, the visible events and choose show all none. So for right now, I want to just choose none because I don't want all of those. I just want to simplify things. And let's choose edit filters. And let's choose ICMP. Okay. And then we can close that. So now all we're going to see is the, is the ping traffic. So let's start by going over to the PC. And we can either, uh, there are a couple ways we can do like the command prompt like we did before where we pinged using the command prompt. But another way that you can watch a protocol data unit, a PDU, move across the network is just simply click this add simple PDU. Click it on the device you want to start with, and then click on the device you want to send it to. Okay, so in this case, we are sending from hold up, big up 10.10.10.2, and we're going to 10.10.10.1. Okay, now we have the PDU here. And to watch it move across the network, this is super cool. You can either hit play and it'll just run through the whole process or you can step through it. So I like to step through it because this is where you really begin to see what's going on in the OSI model. So let's click the step button. It'll send the packet from the PDU from the PC to the switch. Let's click on it there, bring up this window, and it shows you the first tab is the OSI model. And what it does is it explains to you everything that's going on. So we're at layer one, where we start off at uh, fast port ethernet zero, one, and we're starting off with uh, the source MAC address. Um, notice here it ends in four triple D. And if we click on this and open up settings interface, you'll notice the MAC address ends in four triple D. So it's showing that it's coming from this machine and it's going to four C zero one as the destination MAC address. So click that, um, the router to pop up, and then go into Settings or Gigabit Ethernet, the uh, four seasons so are the last four of the MAC address there, and you'll see that's where it's going. So then it moves you over to that's the inbound, that's the outbound, shows you again um, the MAC address where it's, where it's starting, where it's going. Then you can look at the inbound PDU details, open that a little bit, and you have again the little more we have information again the source MAC address remember it ended in 4 triple D and you have the destination 4c01 um, then we move down we see we're using the IP version 4 it's going to show you the source IP address which is 10.10.10.2 which is the PC here and the destination IP 10.10.1 is the router and it gives you more information. A lot of it I don't understand yet. I'm still learning. Outbound PDU details, same kind of information, the source, the destination, et cetera. This is really, and then the OSI model, this is really helpful in beginning to understand and visualize how and why um, the protocol data units move across the network. So we'll close that. We're gonna hit the next step. We're gonna go from the, it's gonna go from the switch to the router. If you look over here, not only can you, um, you can look at the individual steps here as well. So we started off and that'll bring up the first step. And then we went from the PC to the switch. 
get your data there, your information like that. And then we've gone from the switch to the router, bring up that information. And again, each step of the way, it gives you amazing information to help you understand what's going on, why and how. So we can go ahead and step back. So it's going to send it back to the switch. And we'll step it back and it's going to go back to the PC. And from start at the PC, PC to the switch, switch to the router. We went from the router back to the switch. And we went from the switch back to the PC. And then we have, you'll notice there that it's got a blinking green check mark. It tells us that everything worked out fine. So you're completely union. You can click on each of these steps, get the information you need, you'd like to have. So that's basically it. That, that's all you need to get started with um, Packet Tracer. Um, you know, just the basics of the interface. Again, there's so much depth to this program. I, I haven't even begun to scratch the surface, but hopefully this video is giving you enough to get started, uh, to begin setting up, to begin playing and experimenting, and to begin uh, following along other tutorials, because there are loads out there that use the um, use Packet Tracer, for example, in YouTube videos. So, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll, uh, as soon as I can, I'll upload another video about my quest to gain the CCNA, and hopefully this has been helpful to you.